It was 1903 when the very first successful flight in history occurred. It was thanks to the relentless efforts of Orville and Wilbur Wright that the self-propelled little aircraft took flight. It was piloted by Orville and stayed in the air for 12 seconds and managed to cover 120 feet. Don't get us wrong, people have been trying to be airborne for centuries with some catastrophic consequences. Today, we have a look at some planes that you'll be wondering, how on earth was that even airborne? Number 19. The Lockheed Salmon This intriguing-looking plane, for want of a better word, made an impressive 32 flights. It was designed to take off and land vertically and was built for the U.S. Navy. Due to financial constraints, the Navy couldn't afford large, expensive aircraft carriers in every fleet, so they hoped this would expand the Navy's air support at a fraction of the cost. There were a few problems. Pilots were not happy to land the craft as it was more than just intimidating, and the craft took a long time to take off and land, making it useless for combat purposes. Number 18. Caprone CA-60 Transaero Granted, this crazy contraption was only airborne for a few seconds, but it still counts. The Caproni Transaero was also known as the Nova Plano, meaning nine wings. It was only a prototype, but was intended to carry 100 passengers on its transatlantic airliner. It had eight engines and three triple sets of wings. Its maiden voyage took place in 1921, and after it reached close to 60 feet in the air, crashed into the water. Fortunately, no harm was done to the pilot. That was the last time the Nova Plano ever took off. Number 17. Goodyear Inflatoplane Goodyear is known around the world as being an incredible tire maker, so it was quite a surprise when they tried to make an aircraft. They had hoped the plane could easily be dropped down to downed pilots, giving them a way to escape. The plane was built in 1956, and there were two versions. The GA-468 was a single-seater and could be inflated within five minutes, and the GA-466, which was a two-seater. The project was cancelled, as it was considered too risky, as the plane could be brought down with a bow and arrow. There are two currently on display, one at the Franklin Institute in Philadelphia, and one at the Smithsonian. Institution in Washington. Number 16. Vought V173 Flying Pancake You know the saying, as flat as a pancake? This plane was just that, a flat flying aircraft. Apparently, when it comes to aircraft's abilities to fly, there are a few non-negotiables, like a lifting body, a propulsion device, a means of control, and a means of landing. The rest are just details, so in other words, the design is really up to your imagination and physics. This particular craft was built when the U.S. realized they needed a craft that could easily and quickly take off from short runways. Charles H. Zimmerman created the first scale model, and the first prototype was built from wood. The first flight took place on the 23rd of November, 1942, and Charles Lindbergh even had a go flying the machine stating that it was surprisingly easy to handle. Number 15. The Avrocar Just the name Avrocar sounds quite exciting, and this insane-looking airplane took flight on the 12th of November, 1959. It's thanks to a Canadian effort that this supersonic fighter plane was created in the first place. It can take off and land vertically. It goes without saying that it also looks like a flying saucer. The government initially funded the project, but when things ended up costing more than anticipated, they withdrew funding. It was offered to the U.S. Army and government, and they took the project over in 1958. The Army wanted the craft to be a subsonic, all-terrain transport for troops, while USAF wanted to see it hovering below enemy radar and zoom off at supersonic speed. The designers believed they could achieve both. There were two models built, and modification after modification was introduced. However, funding from the Americans also ran out, and the whole project was cancelled. Number 14. The Rotary Rocket Roton Yep, not an airplane, we know, but certainly a very strange flying machine. It resembles a thimble. This Roton was designed by Rotary Rocket in the late 1990s, and the idea came from Gary Hudson. It was intended to reduce the cost of launching payloads into low Earth orbit by tenfold. They made a full-scale test model, which completed three successful flights. But sadly, the money dried up, and so did their vision. The company shut down in 2001, and the Roton is on permanent display at the Mojave Spaceport. Number 13. The Hiller X-18 This intriguing aircraft is called the Hiller X-18, and it was an experimental cargo transport aircraft created in 1955. It took its first flight in 1959 and was one of the first planes to test new concepts like tilt wings and vertical takeoff and landing. Despite 20 successful flights, the plane had difficulty in high winds, with the wings not rotating quite like they should. There was only one of them ever built by Stanley Hiller Jr. and Hiller Aircraft Corporation. This craft was nicknamed the Propello Plane thanks to the 16-foot blades featured on the wings. The plane was grounded after it spun out of control on its 20th flight. Number 12, the BD-5, also known as the world's smallest jet since 2004. This cute little aircraft was first introduced by Bede Aircraft during the 70s. Bede Aircraft was a home-building kit distributor started up by James R. Bede. 
James designed over a dozen aircraft in his time, but due to a string of business failures, didn't get many off the ground. The BD-5 was first introduced in kit form, and 12,000 orders were taken. Shortly thereafter, the company went bankrupt, and orders stopped. BD Microtechnologies Incorporated picked up on the concept in 1992 and built his little aircraft, which can reach speeds of 320 miles an hour and is 16.4 feet in length. Number 11. Convair F2Y Sea Dart This was an American seaplane fighter jet that exceeded the speed of sound, the first aircraft to ever achieve this. It featured twin hydro skis that would be used during takeoff and landing. Created in the 1950s, this jet plane was only flown as a prototype. On the 4th of November 1954, the Convair F2Y Sea Dart disintegrated mid-air, leaving behind four other models that were kept in reserve until 1962. The craft found some fame when it was featured on the pilot episode of the television series Sea Hunt. Number 10. Sikorsky X-Wing This intriguing piece of machinery was built to have the best of both worlds. The speed and mechanisms of a jet, with the same vertical takeoff and landing abilities as a helicopter. Things didn't go according to plan, and the program was cancelled in 1988 when way better designs were revealed by competitors. Number 9. McDonnell XF-85 Goblin This cute little guy was developed shortly after World War II by the USAF due to the lack of range offered by fighter escorts of the era. The idea was for the little bomber to be launched from a large bomber, with a lucky pilot hopping in and being released at altitude when the need arose. As you can imagine, the little imp was no match for proper fighters if he didn't get shot to pieces. Docking was somewhat tricky. Anyone surprised? Number 8. Domicopter The only reason this is on the list is because when on earth did you ever think you would see a flying pizza? It was 2013 when we were introduced to the Domicopter, a type of drone that was able to deliver Domino's pizza. This was done in the UK, and it's most certainly not happening in the US anytime soon, as the use of domestic drones is prohibited. Number 7. Stipa Caproni Looks ridiculous, doesn't it? Designed by an Italian, Luigi Stipa, the aircraft has some method to its madness. The propeller in the hollow tubular fuselage forms a venture effect, making the propulsion by the prop more efficient. Test pilots were amazed at the stability, citing it as too stable, meaning maneuverability was compromised. It also proved to have the shortest takeoff and landing ability of any aircraft of the time. Overall, the cons evened out the pros, which is why we don't see them buzzing around today. That's all for creativity, though. Number 6. Curtis Wright VZ-7 This is truly an out-of-this-world aircraft, which is also called the Flying Jeep. As you can see, it's a pretty dangerous thing to fly, and although it was rather easy, it never quite met Army standards. Not surprising. It was created in 1958 and featured four propellers attached on either side of the fuselage. It performed tasks quite easily, but it's believed one of the reasons it didn't make the cut was the fact that the pilot was very exposed, making him a super easy target. Number 5. The HZ-1 Aerocycle You look at this craft and you can sort of guess why it didn't work out. The HZ-1 Aerocycle was designed by DeLochner Helicopters, and they hoped it would become the standard investigation craft for the U.S. Army. But think about the poor pilot. If he loses balance and falls, he falls straight into the propellers, or he's a seriously easy target otherwise. One of the advantages of this chopper was that inexperienced pilots could be taught how to fly it within 20 minutes. The prototype took its first rocky flight on the 22nd of November, 1954, and after a few too many crashes, they binned the idea completely. Number 4. Bartini Beriev VVA-14 At first glance, you'll think this aircraft has been in a horrific accident, but that's actually how the plane is supposed to look. It's mean and beefy, and you'd feel safe going up against the enemy in this machine. It's a vertical takeoff amphibious aircraft, and was built by the Russians to ascertain whether aircraft could be compatible in water and in the air. It was built in the 1970s, and in order for this beast to work, it needed 12 engines to be installed. A smaller prototype flew on September 4th, 1972. It's not clear whether the bigger plane ever made it off the ground, but the prototype clocked over 100 hours of flight. The original aircraft is now at the Russian Federation Central Air Force Museum in pieces. Number 3. B-377PG or Pregnant Guppy When you've got to transport something that's pretty awkward in shape, size, and weight, then this is the answer for you. The B-377PG was built to assist NASA in transporting some of the components of the Apollo moon missions. This craft took flight for the first time on September 19, 1962. Calculations were made after the craft had transported all the awkwardly shaped cargo, and thanks to the Guppy, they had saved three weeks' transport time had they gone with barge and $16 per mile. The Guppy was sold and broken up in 1979. 
Number two, Mil V12. Only two prototypes of this unusual looking chopper were built by the Russians during the late 60s, and although the first flight was a disaster, subsequent flights went well. The design won several awards, including the Sikorsky Prize given by the American Helicopter Society for outstanding achievements in helicopter technology. Sadly, by the time the chopper was ready to go to production, cheaper and better alternatives were already available. Number one, H4 Hercules II, but most people know it as the Spruce Goose. This 200-ton beast was literally built with a wooden frame and has the title of the largest fixed-wing seaplane to have ever been built. It was designed by Howard Hughes and made one brief flight on November 2nd, 1947. It's now on display at Evergreen Aviation and Space Museum in McMinnville, Oregon. Thank you guys so much for watching. Remember to leave a like if you enjoyed the video and subscribe for more daily videos just like this one.